Apple stone. One thing we've observed at geysers is two types of eruptions, small ones and big ones. And this bubble trap now helps us understand why we have small and big eruptions. Every now and then a little bubble will leak out the top, and that makes a small eruption that just happened. And eventually all this water gets hot enough that one of those small little eruptions turns into a big eruption. When a big eruption happens, everything reaches the boiling temperature. Water at the top, water at the bottom. And as soon as the eruption begins, the pressure everywhere is lowered and the water turns into steam. And then we get a big eruption. It looks like we don't have any consecutive large eruptions. So we need to figure out why, right? why it's so irregular. Today we're measuring the temperature in the bottom and the top of the model, and then the other lines we're looking at are temperature of our heat source and temperature of the surrounding air, just so we can see that our environmental conditions are constant. We leave this model running for hours and hours, sometimes days, you know, come in and check on it every few hours, but what we want to get is a lot of data. We also record video of the model so we can go back and look at different characteristics of the eruption, but temperature is our most important measurement, I think, because it's easy to pick out the big eruptions in a temperature record. There's no eruption at the moment, but we can see these little fluctuations in the uh, top and bottom temperature recordings, and those are the signatures of bubbles rising up through the conduit, and they're transferring heat, and that's a temperature change. So it's exciting to finally make measurements in a geyser and understand what's going on, why the eruptions start, why they end. But there are many things we don't understand. Real geysers are regular. Old Faithful is called Old Faithful because it's regular. The geysers in Chile erupt every 132 seconds, one we studied. It doesn't matter whether it's night or day, cold or warm. So even though we understand many features of how the eruptions work, there's still basic questions that we don't understand. And so hopefully we can go back and make more measurements.